Hello and welcome to another episode of Live Feed with your host, Richard Santiago. Live Feed is brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com, 501c3 nonprofit organization geared at helping survivors of bullying. So let them help you. Also brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher for all your teacher resources. Check out Traveling Tech Teacher. Dot com. Welcome, welcome, Beck Soxy. Thank you for joining the show. Thank you, guys. Uh, so, MG, thank you for joining the show. Uh, so today we're going. Uh, I was asked, "What was your workup call?" Story time with Mary online. Thank you for joining the show. That's a new one. Where are you from? Liverpool Care Center. I'm going to assume that that is the UK, even though there is a Liverpool in New York. Upstate New York. Thank you, everyone, for joining the show. Wow, a lot of people coming on. MAO Inspires. Thank you for joining the show. So I was asked, when it comes to life, what was your wake-up call? Um, so for those of you that don't know, I'm, I am Puerto Rican. Both my parents were born in Puerto Rico. And I am first generation uh, born in New York City. And when we were raised, um, in the time that uh, my parents were, you know, young, young, fresh, new parents, um, we were taught, okay, you know, hey, you know, you have whites, blacks, and there's another thing called Hispanics. Love, Link, thank you for joining the show. Um, so... I grew up being Hispanic. I grew up, okay, I'm, I'm Hispanic. This, what, and, and everything that it details with that, you know, there's, there's a pride with that, just like any other race, you know, there's a pride with that. But when I was 15 years old, um, and this was a wake up call for me, folks. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I am embarrassed to say this, you know, I thought, okay, um, it's white, black, and Hispanic, you know, they don't, I, I was never racist towards anyone, you know. And one day I'm in, um, in a park and I'm doing my thing, you know. I probably was 14 years old and doing my thing. And um, I hear in the background, hey, N-word. And we all know what the N-word is, right? Hey, N-word, hey, N-word. And, and someone's calling up and I'm just ignoring it. Because in my crazy mind, Emily, thank you for joining the show. In my crazy mind, they're not talking to me because I'm Latino or I'm Hispanic or I'm Puerto Rican. So they're not calling for me. That was my warped sense at the age of 14 years old. So they kept calling, they kept calling. Of course, I kept ignoring because they weren't talking to me. Finally, these guys come up and they come talk to me and, and they're like, hey, and we're, we're talking to you. And I'm looking at them and I'm going, you're not talking to me. I'm Hispanic. I'm Puerto Rican. And when they heard that, they said, oh, you're Puerto Rican. Oh, so you're just an N-word with, with straight hair. And that was my wake-up call. That's when I realized that... Um, I'm what you know the racism that I've experienced as a Hispanic is no different to the racist person and should be no different to me with what the African American is going through. And uh, it was a big wake up call for me. And like I said, I was never racist against. Uh, African American community or the white community. I was never racist. We, we were just not taught that way in my family. That's not to say a Hispanic person cannot be racist, um, but we were not taught that. We taught we love everyone, you know, no matter what color they are. But in my mind, I thought for sure at the age of 14 that the experience that the African American is experiencing all over the world, not just in America, 
It has nothing to do with me. I am apart from that and everything else like that. And uh, I learned very, very quickly that that is not the case. And, and, it, it, and it really hurts me to see my Hispanic family members, to see Hispanic people that are joining the racist chants of, of you know, like African Americans, uh, uh, you know, you, you got to be careful around them because something's always going to happen negatively around them. And that's just horrible. So that was my wake up call. Has any of you ever had a wake up call like this or anything to this? Um, it doesn't have to be about racism. Um, another wake up call I, I've, I've had is um, with, with, with the, what women have to experience, you know, in terms of um, sexual harassment in the workplace. That was a, a wake up call for me too, when I was hearing the stories that women would have to go through. Um, and it's horrible. No one should have to go through that, you know? So who wants to start the Q&A first? Uh, smash that quest question mark. Hello, Tully. Thank you for joining the show, Tully. Thank you so much. So, smash that Q&A button and, let, you know, let's start a Q&A. You can... You can make a statement about what I just said. You could come up with another question. Uh, and for those of you that are new to the show, I know, thank you for smashing that heart. I know that some of you are probably like, wait, I thought this was a a feed about bullying and, and things of that nature. Uh, we talk about many things on this show. I like to think that I am teaching life lessons to kids, to parents, and to adults that have to deal with bullying. And I think that with the lessons that we talk about, if you learn to who you truly are, like for me, that's when I learned who I truly was, when I had that wake-up call that I just said. And being that I had that wake-up call, it was, I was able to be more positive in myself. And I always tell you guys that when you're positive, um, you're less likely to be bullied uh, when you carry yourself in a positive way. Yesterday I said, if you're constantly looking down all the time, the bullies are going to always think that, you know, you're weak because you're looking down. You're afraid to look people in their face. You're afraid to speak up. So um, that moment for me, kids supporting kids, thank you for joining the show. Uh, that moment for me, that wake-up call for me, I feel made me feel more uh, pride, prideful of my of myself. So I carried myself differently, which helps me against bullies. Hello, princess. Thank you for joining the show. Who's gonna start that Q and A? Uh, you, if you're wondering what what does he mean by Q and A, because uh, I get that question a lot. Um, there's a question mark underneath your screen that you should be able, if you have the latest uh, version of Instagram, that you can hit and you can ask a question or you can just make a statement. Um, Tali, uh, Beck, Beck says, uh, yes, yeah, stand up to bullies. Exactly. That, that's what we have to do. Carry ourselves properly and we won't have to deal with bullies. Like I told you guys a, th a thousand times, like I have a 16-year-old son. He's been in Taekwondo all his life. All his life, he's he's a black belt, and he's and I questioned him. I said, "Did you ever have to use it? Ever had to come close? He never had to come close. Why? Because Taekwondo gave him the confidence to walk into a room with his peers and look them in the face, and if someone got out of line, put them in their place. So he never had to use his martial arts. He never had to use it because he had that. Uh, let's see. Tully says to be honest." I sometimes think that I am still trying to figure it out. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, Tully. Nothing wrong with that at all. I know when it comes to parenting, a 15-year-old kid, I've never done that before. So I'm always trying to figure that out too. And I make mistakes and my son calls me on it and I try and learn from that. Bex also says, hashtag one 
human race. That's right. All right, we did get someone to start the Q&A, and it's our good friend Tully, and he says, should we have social media apps on our cell phone or not? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. A lot of people, edits page 16. Thank you for joining the show. A lot of people are always um, downing social media. And, um, you know, to me, social media is like a gun, okay? Gun didn't kill somebody, okay? The gun did not get up and shoot somebody. People do it. And the same thing with social media. If you're saying, well, you know, social media, I don't, I don't think we should have it because people do evil things with it. You know, it's not the social media, guys. It's it's the people on the other end. So you should always, like I said yesterday, listen to what your bully's saying. Listen to someone you meet on social media, what he's what he's truly saying. You know, in between the lines, um, and you'll you'll you should be okay with trying to uh, navigate social media. Uh, yes, parenting isn't easy, says Tully. No, it definitely is not you know and i tell my kids that every day <laughs> um so uh thank you tully for smashing that q a so others can see that uh your question comes up it's easy for everyone in the room to read it so please smash that heart what else what else do you guys want to talk about today uh bex says uh it's a double-edged sword um social media it can be uh used uh positively it can be used positively it's communication yes did you have some more on that and yeah that's the other that's the thing uh guys with the uh some things i think you could only get a couple of words in there so uh yeah so it all depends how we use it and if we come across a guy like i tell you i've had guys come on my page that all they want to do is just start bullying everyone else in the room we just ignore that people and delete them and report them and that's it edits page 16 says hey remember from rosa supporter uh dot 12 yes i do uh how are you doing uh well this is me again another account i deleted my other account for personal issues uh, going on so i'm going to use this account let uh to let you know thank you very much for letting us know it's great to have you back rosalie and uh, don't forget to uh follow us on this account so we can keep up with you as well all right so let's see tully says i see so many people being being a mobile phone zombie yes and uh, you know we we've had said this before on other um on other shows that you you got to take a uh, technology detox once in a while, guys. Uh, I know that me and my wife, we walk probably about 45 minutes every day. Um, and I try to my best, unless I see a picture, because you know me, I'm a photographer, I'm a filmmaker, for those of you that don't know. So I love when, before phones came out and we had uh, cameras on them, I always kept my camera on me, just in case I saw something beautiful. I can shoot it. So I've always been like that. So, uh, but for the most part, when I walk, I try to go on that technology detox. So please guys, always remember to do a technology detox. And our new friend Bex from, I believe the UK, right Bex? You're from the UK? Um, we, can, we can teach kids how to protect themselves on social media. Yeah, we can meet, reach more people. Like I've reached people that have told me that um, somebody, and this really touched my heart, somebody sent them a link, they saw my show, they sent them the link to the show, they watched it, and they were really probably about to commit suicide. And they saw the show, and they saw uh, the things we were talking about, and they wanted to know more, so they started looking at our other feeds, and then they became regulars on the show. So, yes, we can save lives. We can teach uh, cognitive this this not oh i'm sorry i this this and get i don't know that word i'm not even going to try to pretend guys uh to prevent addiction oh okay that's good uh let's see so beck says yes she's from the uk and let me say something real quick before i continue reading 
Uh, yes, guys, uh, for those of you that don't know, my family and I are moving to Italy. Um, we, uh, we hope, I should say we hope, uh, we're hearing stories now that there are other Americans that are supposed to be moving to Italy to start new jobs, and they've been in limbo waiting because uh, Italy is not uh, and giving visas to Americans because let's just face it, they're dumb. And I can say that because I live in, Amer in America. They're dumb and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And Italy does not want, and, and I'm sure none of Europe wants to, uh, you know, go through that um, COVID thing again. So they're really keeping them out. But yes, I'll be uh, hopefully sometime in August, I will be living in Italy, and we, uh, so the show will take a different time, and um, it's really funny, because when I first started the show, I had a lot of people from Europe coming on, and then I started doing my show a little later, because, um, as you know, I do films and commercials and stuff like that, so it was my, more of my work was bringing me to do the show later, later, and now I have more people from Asia and from uh, Australia on the show so i'm gonna try i know one thing that i have to spend 14 days in quarantine and i'm and i think i'm not gonna make a promise yet but i think when i do that i'm gonna do two shows one nice early for the people that live on one side of the earth and then one for my australian friends so please australian people keep tuning in my asian friends keep tuning in so let's see tully says everybody's driving looking down and Dry, uh, trying to drive, yeah, pushing, pushing prams. I don't know what prams prams are. Riding on, on bikes, etc. I don't know what prams are. I'm from I'm even pronouncing that right. Yeah, you know, I hate that. I really hate that when somebody, um, does something that's kind of weird, and then they pass you by, and they and they're like this. They're literally like this while they're driving. It's like, dude. What are you doing? I agree. I agree. I hate that. Uh, so Beck says, uh, wrote digital digital uh, gen gen X in order to protect kids. Is that a book that you wrote? I would love to talk more about that book uh, with you, uh, Bex. Uh, let's see. And Princess says, I had to to stop a bully from going after me and my family. How did you? How did you stop it? Tell us how you stopped it, Princess, so that um, other people can learn from what you did. Uh, yes, gen genocide or genocide. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today, guys. I can't read. Um, okay, that's cool. Yeah, we have to set something up where you can come on and uh, do a feed with us. And talk about that book. I, I want to hear more, more about it. Digital genocide. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, let's come on. Have you been doing any book signings? Have you been doing any um, touring uh, with your new book, Bex? Yeah, I really can't. I really can't wait to uh, get out. Um, when I get out to Italy, I know that I'm gonna get more back. Uh, get back to having a little more people from the UK and from uh, that side of the world come join our show and kind of get an idea of what what that side is dealing with bullying because everyone's dealing with bullying and um, it'll be interesting to to find out especially how how Italy feels about bullying because I've never I've had people from Italy follow our show and I know bullying's a uh, issue in Italy but I've never really, really sat down. Maybe I can make a film and talk about with some kids about what bullying is going on there in, in um, that, that neck of the woods. <laughs> so uh, again, guys, uh, our show is brought to you by um, thebullyexposed.com and by uh, Traveling Tech Teacher. So let's see here. And I'm sorry, uh, I hope, I hope they still on. Sorry, kids supporting kids. There's a there's a button that comes up and it tells me how many people, 
have left messages. It didn't do that. I went in to check myself and I just saw your your message. So sorry it took so long. So let's see. What advice would you give to someone who is being bullied? Okay. First thing I would do is I would uh, write everything down. Okay. Tell an adult you can trust. I always say that with kids. Tell an adult. I used to say tell Tell your parents, and then people would say to me, I, I don't trust my parents. And that's a shame. So I turned to saying, find someone you can absolutely trust. R start to write, or if not write, start to uh, record the bullying. Uh, and make sure you get dates, times, and, and all that kind of stuff. Then go to someone you trust. Get that person to go down to the school. You know, if we're talking about a school. Uh, we're talking about workplace. Uh, that's very tough because uh, HR, I'm going to tell you guys right now, HR is not your friend. So if you're being bullied at work, HR is not your friend. Okay, I say it like that so that you remember. I think Richard said HR is not my friend. Yeah, because I said it in a way that will help you remember. HR is not your friend, guys. They don't care. So write things down. Uh Again, I know there's some countries that you're not allowed to record without people's knowledge. But if you live in a country that you are allowed, I know I did when I was being bullied. So I'm not telling you something that I did not do myself. I recorded my bullying without the bully uh, knowing and get that all down there because you're going to need that if should you decide to sue. Okay, I see there's another question mark, but let me answer comments in there. Let's see. Uh, Beck says not yet, and she's, I'm sure she's referring to whether she's doing book signings or, or lectures and stuff like that. One of our characters made a stop to, um, made a cause to stop herself being bullied in social media. How does she do that? So when you say characters, is this a nonfiction book or is this a fiction book? Let me know. Uh, yes, make a European film. Great, great. Yeah, I know that what I'm going to enjoy about going to Europe is I know that Europeans love American filmmakers. So I should have no problem finding people that would be interested in telling their stories. As you guys know, the area that I live now, um, which my wife does not want me to say where I live anymore, but I will tell you this. It's a commonwealth of the United States. So I live in a commonwealth of the United States and they have a film community here, but for some reason I was unable to connect with them. And that's not saying anything bad to them or anything bad to me. I, we just weren't able to click. So uh, Princess says, I told them bullying will not will not fix or help if the, if the bullies doesn't stop. It's going to make it's going to make make them any better. Okay. Uh, and Beck says, I agree on something that I said. She said, I agree. What's, uh, that's why we need unions. Well, you know, I'm going to say something real quick about unions. Uh, and I hope I don't offend anyone. Um, uh, I, we had a union uh, when I was bullied. Uh, I was bullied by the United States Postal Service. And we are one of the strongest, I say that in quotes, we have one of the strongest unions also one of the corrupt union, most corrupt unions in the world, probably, and they did not help me at all. So, um, you, it's it's a shame. There are some corrupt unions. I'm not going to say all unions are corrupt. There are some corrupt unions that look the other way. I know that the NALC, who is supposed to protect the letter carriers for the United States, is definitely. Um, corrupt and people I always say that people are like oh my god why are you saying that you know aren't you be afraid of being sued no because I have enough evidence to prove it so let me go to the question before I go to more comments all right guys it's because someone has a question and my phone's acting up and it's not allowing me to go to the comment okay here we are now we uh let's see here it is so it's from Tully. Tully says, uh, uh, let, give me a second. Okay, here we go. Uh, they enforce political correctness 
in the workplace in America? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I mean, they just passed. Um, if you if you follow American um, politics, they just passed a law that uh, if you're part of the gay community with limitations, you can um, you can sue if you're discriminated or book in the workplace. I, I can't believe that that just passed now. I always thought that was that was a they were part of the protective class and then they just limit limited as well. I I had a person who became a friend. They they found out about the bully exposed and we became friends. They used to work for the IRS and they were male and then they decided, well, I'm going to I want to start living my life as a female. So they did and shortly after they were fired and they couldn't do anything about it. So have they enforced? No, no, not at all. So let's see, where did we leave off? Uh, uh, so Beck says that it is fiction. Okay, it is a, a fictional story. Okay, Tully says, I think if political correctness is enforced in, in Australia, we, we wouldn't have so many, so much bullying. Yeah, you know, that's the other thing is it, it really ticks me off, to be honest. It ticks me off that comp um, governments, okay, because everyone's guilty of this. Governments turn around and say, oh, you know, we just passed this great law, you know, whatever it may be. Women's right to vote, let's just say. Let's go back to 1920 in America. I don't know in the UK or in Australia when women had got the right to vote, Um but um, so let's just say, let's say right to vote. So they give you right to vote. Uh, all right, we gave women right to vote. We're great. We're awesome. But and then they uh, do these little things to kind of suppress women from voting. From voting, you know, they'll they'll uh, okay, all women can vote on Saturday, and then the the place is closed on Saturday, and they know the place. You know, that this, that's not something that they do. But you you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, that's kind of things that they do. They suppress it. In their own way, or they'll they'll give all the women, because this is, in my opinion, this is what they're doing to the African American community. They'll give the woman, or they'll give the African American community the broken um, um, equipment, voting equipment. So now the person comes in to vote, and it's like they can't vote. Oh, we're sorry, we didn't know how are we. And then they they justify it by how are we supposed to know that the equipment was going to break down. Come on. You kind of knew, you kind of knew that, you know. So um, Beck says, that's awful. Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's terrible. Stop, stop doing that. Stop uh, suppressing. You know, what I always ask people, and I wish someone would come on the show. I wish a bully would come on the show and answer questions, you know, like, what are you afraid of? You know, like, as, like for me, I'm a male. Okay, in case you haven't noticed, I'm a male. And when I hear a woman says, you know, women rights, you know, women, women needs more rights, equal rights for women, that kind of thing. That doesn't offend me. That doesn't offend me. You know, the person that's offended is a person that, that doesn't want that particular race or group of people to get ahead for fear that, you know, they're gonna do. They're gonna do to us what we did to them. But women don't think that way. People, uh, most people of color don't think. Oh, okay. Now it's my turn to get my revenge. You know, they they don't do that. And you know, I don't think they think that way. And if they do, we we you know hold them accountable. And that's it. If you you know if you're so afraid of women getting power. People of color getting power or someday when Martians come, Martians getting power, you know, becoming presidents. Liz, Liz Beth, thank you for joining the show. Um, if you're so afraid of that, all you have to do is hold people accountable. OK, so if you get a, a woman in office or, you know, whatever the case may be, and they start to discriminate against men or or people start to discriminate against one group, you just hold them accountable. Hold them accountable, and it ends. Make them pay for the wrong that they did, and it ends. It's as simple as that. You know, racism, you know, I, for my friends in Australia, I hear, and in the UK, okay, my 
African-American friends in the UK, they tell me there's racism in the UK. Uh, my friends in, in, in AU tell me there's racism there. So there's racism everywhere. And if you hold someone accountable, if you hold someone accountable, I'm going to say it again, the racism will stop, period. For instance, I've always said this. If you go to Madison Square Garden where the Knicks play, right? My favorite team, for those of you that don't know. My favorite team. Go to watch them play. Uh, African-American basketball player comes on the field. They yell out, hey, N-word. You take that guy. You take a nice photo of him. And you take him right out the door and say, you are now banned for life from the Madison Square Garden. You will see how many people will no longer say that word. And that's what needs to happen, accountability. So if you're afraid women take power, they're gonna start giving all the jobs to the men, then they're, they're gonna suppress us, blah, blah, blah. Well, then you know what? You hold them accountable when they do that. But until then, keep your mouth shut. You just don't want equality because you, or have something wrong with you, just like any bully. Uh, Bex says, when half the population is illiterate <laughs> because governments don't educate them, then the people in power, um, then the people in power have too much. Yep, yep. And they want them that way. That's that's definitely why um, you, you heard it from Trump's mouth. Huh? You know, he said it himself. I'm not saying anything that he didn't say. I just remembered I got myself some tea because my throat gets very sore talking for an hour. Um, you, heard it from him, you heard it from his own mouth. He said, um, if I ever ran for president, this was years ago. If I ever ran for president, I would run as a Republican because they're not that smart. And of course, not all of them are like that. I know some very, very intelligent um, uh, Republicans but the most uh, majority of them keep falling prey to this, you know, oh, you have to fear the woman taking power. You have to fear the, um, the person of color taking power. You have to fear the space aliens taking power because if they take power, they'll take all the power away from the humans. And that's just not true. Uh, Tully says, unfortunately, the laws in Australia are too soft yeah i think they're too soft i've never been to australia but i'm taking what i know from america i think they're too soft because a lot of the people in power are doing those same things they're discriminating they're uh bullying in the workplace and they know that if they make these strong laws that they can't bully they have to abide by them because they're the ones that made them uh, Bex says exactly, again, agreeing with me. I'm glad that we agree, Bex. <laughs> they, they want people illiterate and deliberately don't educate their women in certain countries. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a lot of countries that, um, yeah, they don't want to um, educate the women at all. And it's like, why? I mean, and, and it's simple. It's simple. They are doing what's called, uh, what is it? Trans. Is it called trans? I forget what the term is, so I don't want to, if you guys remember, uh, put it on the, put it up in the uh, Q&A. Um, they're mirroring, kind of mirroring. I know what I did to women. I know that how I objected women. I don't mean me personally. I mean, this is what they're saying. I know what I did. So, and you know, if they're in power, they're going to do the same to, to me. And that really is an insult to women, people of color, you know, that, oh, just because you struck me, you know, you smacked me, you think that now that I'm in power, I'm going to smack you down. No, you know, I'm peaceful. I, I just want to live my life. You know, are there going to be some women and some people that, you know, I'm only going to hire women or I'm only going to hire people of color? Yeah. And like I said, hold them accountable and it ends. It's as simple as that. Just like what, you know, we should have been doing all along. You hold people accountable. You make them pay. You hurt their pocketbook. That's the biggest thing because these type of people, all they care about is money. 
They're not like you and me, right? I volunteer my time every day to come on the show and try to help somebody with bullying. Um, not lately because of COVID, but I also volunteer and make films for nonprofits as well. I'm always volunteering. I'm probably volunteering more than I'm actually making uh, films and, and commercials and stuff like that, to be honest, in, in some points. Um, and so if I get in power, I'm not going to be saying, okay, now let's see, N you know, the white man never, never hired me for a job. I'm never hiring that, you know, I'm, people like us just don't think like that, you know, but people don't see that. People don't see that at all. So let's see how much time we got. Oh, 35 minutes. Wow. I feel like I've been talking with you guys a long time. So that that's good. You know, that's always good company when you when you've been somewhere and time flies, you know you're with good company. So thank you, Bex and and Tully. Uh and Pico, who's our friend from Japan that always uh joins in, he must be working. Let me take a break real quick and kind of reach out to him. Let me reach out to another friend from Australia. So I reached out to another friend from Australia. Let's see, here's a person that, that always comes on the show. Uh, okay, there's a few people right there. Kind of hit them up and let them know we're here talking. So uh, what else? What else do you guys want to talk about? Let's take the Q&A, make sure no one said any questions. You guys are doing, you guys are doing great. Let's see. So Tully says, Bex, sometimes it's the teachers that aren't educated enough. Mm. Yeah. You know, the thing that, that, that gets me, um, I was talking with a person in, in South Africa, a, a Caucasian person about this in South Africa, um, that, you know, he lost, he currently lost a job to an African person because of what they call Bob. I forget what Bob stands for, but it's basically uh, affirmative action, you know, where a group of people, uh, uh, organization has to hire a certain amount of minorities. Uh, and he was so upset. And I said, you know, I'm sorry that that happened to you, but do you realize how many people don't, don't get jobs because of the color of their skin? My, Grandfather, like I said, you know, my parents moved here. My, um, my, it was actually my grandfather. I, I think I said that uh, wrong, and I apologize. It was my grandfather that moved here. My grandfather was an awesome carpenter in Puerto Rico. Um, he was an amazing carpenter. He could not get a job here in America. He moved back to um, to Puerto Rico because he could not get work here. Um, so, right, you know, why couldn't my uncle get a job? So when people tell me, you know, oh, I can't be, I hear it a lot lately in America from, oh, I can't believe that she got the job. You know, she got the job because she was a woman. No, maybe she got it because she, she earned it, you know? And if she did get the job because she's a woman, do you know how many women that were more qualified than men I didn't get the job. So, you know, the thing that you have to understand, that this is the thing that gets me. They're pissed off about that. But what you don't understand is what you're saying is a little sexist. And if it wasn't sexism, then the women would feel like I can always get a job. Everything is fair. And there would be no affirmative action for women. And then there would be no, and if you thought the same way about race, there would be no affirmative action for race. Or there wouldn't be people getting jobs because they have to fit a quota. The way I look at it, I'm I'm sorry. I don't my heart doesn't bleed out to those people who who are uh angry at that because I know how many people did not get jobs. I know tons of times when I didn't get a job and uh then I overhear the 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 chef say, you know, I'm not hiring some, you know, spick, which is the negative term for a Puerto Rican in America. I'm not hiring that spick. Um, no way. There's no way. So that means I didn't get the job because uh, of my race. So I don't, I, my heart doesn't bleed to you. Maddie, what's up? 
Thank you for joining the show. There's another person from the UK. How you doing, Maddie? So let's see here. We have some things that were said. So let's see. Uh, Bex says, yes. And, and as with all people, they can be bullies too. Yes. Bex also goes on to say there is a class system in the UK. Yes, too. And um, sometimes you, you can't get a job because you're from the wrong class. So unfair. Yes. And I love the fact, Beck, I really do love the fact that you said two. I know it's only three letters, but that's a very important thing. Sometimes when I talk to my friends in the UK, they talk about the class system, but they don't say two. They only recognize the class system. They don't recognize the racism that goes on. There was a, a woman, uh, Tully, what, what was the name of that Australian, I mean, that um, singer from the UK, the, the African uh, singer from the UK? She, so I started to follow her after Tully brought her, you know, brought her to my attention. And she did a blog where she walked into a store in the, U, in the UK and they like almost borderline refused to serve her. And they told her not to pick up the items. Uh, uh, I think she was looking at vases and stuff. And they were like, don't pick up the items. Uh, Maddie says, hey, I'm okay. How you doing? I'm doing good, bud. Good to see you. How's everything? Uh, he says, I've been, I've been joined for a li- I'm going to join for a little bit while because my schoolwork is getting a little stressful. Well, thank you for joining us and taking the stress off. Uh, so you guys are still in school. Wow. How long How long does the UK go to school? Because my son's out of school. He's on summer vacation right now. You guys are still in school? Wow. So um, what were we talking about? Oh, yes. This woman. Yes. Thank you. Lena Leon Lewis. Do you know who she is? Maddie and uh, Bex. Do you know who she is? Uh, so yeah, she, she posted something where they would not let her pick up the items, they and then when she got upset, they were like, oh, oh, you know, like she was going to rip the joint apart. Like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Then the, the, they go outside and they and to, 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 you know, to, you know, to leave. And the dad says, wait, I'm going to be right back. He grabs one of her CDs, shows it to the, the manager. And the manager goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And goes out there and pretty much kisses um, Miss Lewis's ass, you know, and I hope to God, and I, I reached out to her to ask her, and she did not reply back, but I hope to God that she did not spend her money in there. That's the one thing, guys. We cannot spend our money in places that, that bully, you know, for, forget racism. You, you know, if you are being bullied, in, in, for instance, and again, I'm not afraid to say this because I have proof. Verizon Wireless, probably one of the biggest... Uh, corporations in in America and probably throughout the world bullies its employees. Okay, uh, they bully their employees. I have interviewed several uh, supervisors. For, I mean, yeah, one supervisor and several employees from there. And they bully their employees. I used to when before I started doing my film about bullying, I had Verizon. The minute that all these stories started popping up and it was people from different parts of the world with basically the same story that didn't know each other, I canceled uh, Verizon and I went to AT&T. So that's what we need to do. So when I tell you guys, don't shop in stores that bully, don't shop in stores that discriminate against women, don't shop in stores that discriminate against people of color, I am telling you the truth. That it's something that I would do too. I'm not going to tell you guys, do this. And it's not something that I would never do. Trust me on that. Uh, So let's see. Uh, So Bex says, we finish in the end of July. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, Yes, she's great. So she has heard of Miss Lewis. uh, My daughter's favorite singer. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, And Maddie says, "We, we start school... In September and finish in mid July. Okay, so you're almost done. You, you know, you're in your last month. Okay, uh, I finished school on the 18th of July. Okay, interesting. 
and we have uh, so let me just say this first kenzie wildflower wildflower thank you for joining the show and we have a summer break uh from from when we break until the 4th of september so you're back in school on the 4th of september okay got it um let's see here oh. um economics are a powerful weapon in order to stand up to bullies yeah don't shop at these stores people don't get that don't shop i wouldn't shop you know and i know someday i'm telling you right now i know someday that i'm there's going to be a, a store that i really really enjoy and that i really like and i'm going to find out you know that they're a bunch of bullies and you know what i'm not going to shop there anymore it's as simple as that it's as simple as that we have to do that we have to do that because like I said, accountability. If you don't hold anyone accountable, they're not going to change. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if it's like telling someone, you know, like sometimes I have friends and they and they um they were like, you know, I didn't like that you did this, and they tell me a year later, you you're bringing up something I did to you a year earlier. I mean, earlier. Why didn't you tell me this when this happened? You know, so if you don't tell somebody something, they can't change. And it works the same way. If you don't hold them accountable, if you don't, uh, um, you know, hit them in the purse, no one's going to change, guys. No one. Why Why would they, right? Everything's working for them. So why would they? So, you know, uh, let's see here. Okay, so, uh, so while... Wildflower wasn't there. I was going to ask them where they're from. So hit, smash that Q&A. Be sure to smash that heart if you like what we're doing, guys. So, yeah, and, you know, for those of you that are new, I do this every day. Like I said, when I finally move to Italy, I will be quarantined for 12 days. And I think that I'm going to do two shows, maybe three shows, uh, because I'll, I'll have nothing to do, you know. So I'll do three shows um, while we're there. If we have good, um, it's also going to uh, depend on what kind of internet service we have. Because while there's going to be a transition time when we're living in uh, hotels until we finally get our, our place. And, you know, hotel internet is terrible. So hopefully the hotel internet would be good where I can bring you guys shows and we can continue talking about this. I know a few of you have said, and it, it really... It melts my heart. Let me say that. It melts my heart. A few of you have said to me that, you know, you, you wake up to our shows. Do you wake up to the show or you go to sleep to the show or something? Or you look forward to seeing it in the recorded version that they're going to hate the fact that we're not going to be able to to do the show. Um, I know that I would love to do the show while we're in, while I'm in the airport, but my wife hates that. I've tried several times to do shows while I'm in the airport and she just hates that. So, you know, happy wife, happy life. We know that, right? So I know that I won't be able to do any shows uh, while I'm, I'm with, you know, actually getting to, to um, in um, Italy, sorry. You know, the one thing that gets me too, and I really dislike is there are a lot of Americans American Italians, not all of them, American Italians that say that they, that uh, Spanish, this is what I was taught in school, Spanish, French, and Italian all derive from Latin, okay? I can remember growing up, even me as a kid in New York, I remember growing up and um, going to the, the, uh, the Italian mass, you know, they would have the Spanish mass, then they would have the Italian mass, and the Italian mass would be in Latin, you know. And I, I've, I've talked to a few Italians, and like, no, uh, Italian is not Latin. It's not. It's totally different. It's not the same, and blah blah blah. And the reason is for that is because being associated with being Italian is like, you think, I mean, excuse me, not Italian, Latin is being associated with Mexicans or Puerto Ricans. 
And that's a negative thing. And that's a shame. But now that I'm really hitting the books and I mean, I knew a little Italian because I had Italian friends. Uh, but now that I'm really hitting the book and I'm really learning Italian, uh, I'm seeing, oh my God, it's so much, so much like, um, like Spanish. You know, a few of the words and blah, blah, blah. You, for kitchen, for instance, you might say, uh, cas um, I'm sorry, cocina. Uh, now I can't get the Italian up. Um, you say cucina for uh, kitchen and cocina for, for Spanish. So it's, it's, it's so much the same in the way the words come together and so on and so forth. So those people are just, you know, it's a shame that you don't know your own heritage, folks. And I know I have a few friends from Italy who call those type of people plastic Italians. And it's a shame that we have to live with the plastic people in our lives, I think. So let's see. Uh, most of the medical terminology is based on Latin too. Yes, thank you for bringing that up, Telly. Yes, so, so true. So true. So it looks like uh, Maddie left. And thank you, Maddie, for coming in. Uh, I hope he smashed that heart before he left. But... um. Yeah, what's, what's next, guys? We got seven more minutes. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about? What are you, what, what's, what's, what's bugging you? What's, how, Tully, how's, how's work been? Um, what about you, uh, Bex? Do you find any bullying going on in, in the world of authors? Have you met other authors? Have you been able to communicate with other authors? Your book, is it self-published? Or do you have a publishing house? Those are all important things there. I've been approached by a small publishing house to do uh, my story about bullying with the Postal Service. And they want me to put a couple of my own dollars in. And, I, and I'm like, no, you know, I'm self-publishing the film about my life with the Postal Service. I'm not going to do that with a book. So... If you ever see a book from me, it's the people are gonna have to uh, either come out and shell, shell out the money first, or work with me in a volunteering aspect where you know we write this the book together. Uh, because for me, it's more important to get the the story through a nonfiction film. That's that's my opinion on that. So. What else, guys? What what are we doing? And, you know, um, Bex is new, so let me tell Bex why we have the crown, Bex. Uh, one time I was doing a live feed like this, and somebody told me that I was full of myself. Uh, and so I happen to have this sitting in my house because I just got done with a birthday party where everybody had to dress up like prom king and queen. So me and my wife bought these crowns for the party. And I just happened to have it in my office. And so I put it on and say, okay, how about now? Now that I'm wearing this crown, is it, am I uh, full of myself now? And I want everyone to know out there that I'm not wearing this crown because I'm full of myself. It's because this crown is a symbol for all of us to stand up to bullies, that anybody can wear this crown and stand up to a bully, just like I did. Beck says, there is bullying in the teaching workforce. Are you a teacher? Uh, Bex, uh, in the UK, because the power of the unions has been taken away by the government. Oh, very interesting. Uh, crowns are great. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. Um, so, you must be a teacher. Uh, Self-esteem with a crown. Yes. Uh, so, she's saying yes, so I'm, I'm assuming that is to the answer that she's a teacher. Oh, awesome. Uh, that's that's great. Um so your union has lost its power, huh? Why, why do you think your union has lost its power? What do you think made it lose its power? For instance, uh, to answer that question for me, I think that the reason why the NA NALC has lost the power is because it's been infiltrated by what I think is supervisors claiming to be uh, in the interest of the, um, the carrier there. For instance, I'll give you a good example. I was fired, but then I sued and and they had to reverse the firing 
Uh, but I was fired for something that everyone, uh, I mean, not everyone, that a few other people have done in, in my job and were not fired for. Because we have, the, the, the Postal Service encourages us. See, it, it, it's all a lie. They encourage us to, when we see something wrong, to tell, say something. When we see uh, someone stealing mail, for instance, we encourage, say something. When you see the post office uh, abusing, someone abusing their power, speak up. But it, unfortunately, it's only if you see a, a person equal to you uh, doing something wrong. If you see a supervisor doing something wrong, you have to keep your mouth shut. And um, and that's what happened to me. And it's a shame that they that they are allowed to do that. And I think, uh, uh, first of all, I, I think that it's it's also the government too uh, with us. The 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 organizations that are supposed to uh, watch the you know I don't know if they have this in the UK and in Australia, but we have an organization called what is the National Labor Relations Board, and they're supposed to watch unions and make sure that they're not doing anything corrupt. And when people bring up uh, that, oh, these people are, are stealing funds, for instance, you know, they're taking the taxpayers' money and they're using it to, to, to buy themselves trips, let's just say. And that does go on and on in the union and NALC that I talked about. The, 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 I feel that the National Labor Relations Board works with them to crush these people and to, and to get their stories, um, you know, that so they're not told. And I'm hoping that some president comes in and starts to really look at what the Nation, National um, Relations Board is doing because it's terrible. And they need to be looked in on and, and, and fired. Those people need to be fired so you're going to bring people in there so that when someone does come up and says the unions, the unions are doing this and doing that, they can say no. You know, like for instance, the National Labor, uh, Catherine, thank you for joining the show. The National, La National Labor's Relations Board agreed that I should not be fired, but they didn't help me get my job back. And why, why, so why wouldn't you, if you feel that I was fired unjustly, why wouldn't you say, okay, you need to rehire this person back and here's your fine for, for even trying to think that you can fire him for this offense? No, none of that. Uh, Beck says the government did it deliberately. All right. They made management within schools have iterial power. Oh, wow. Wow, that's horrible. Well, I hope that we can come and talk about some more of that. Right now, we are coming down to the wire here, and I don't want to get uh, cut off by um, by Instagram. So let me tell you this, guys. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for coming with me. Uh, Bex, welcome to the family. I'm sure you're going to love our family. We we do a lot of talking and we do a lot of solving. So welcome to the family. I want to remind you guys that Live Feed is brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher. For all your digital resources, uh, check out TravelingTechTeacher.com. And Bex, maybe you might want to check out TravelingTechTeacher.com if you're doing any digital um, any digital uh, teaching over over these next couple of days while you still have school. Uh, it's also brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com, a nonprofit geared at helping survivors of bullying, so let them help you. And also, uh, you can check out uh, this live feed also on our YouTube channel at Nonfiction Filmmakers. So that's going to be it for us, guys. And I want to say, remember, anyone can wear the crown. Anyone can be a hero. So... Be kind to one another, and I'll leave you with an Italian uh, goodbye. Apuesto. <laughs>